industry has changed enormously over time. It's not what it once was. Previously, there were few or no mechanisms and procedures to protect the safety of workers. Gradually, technology has developed better machinery and increased information has modified processes. And industry continues to evolve. The law plays a vital role in enhancing working conditions and the new century brings even greater challenges for industry. Employers, employees and contractors sole traders, large and small companies, all are affected by legal and technological changes. Legal intervention influences most parts of our working lives. Stricter regulation of working conditions means greater protection and security for everyone involved. Occupational health and safety law imposes duties on employers to provide safe working conditions for their employees and those affected by their work. Public opinion indicates that it is employers who should be responsible for their actions. If they breach the law, they should be held liable. Governments have responded to public demand by seeking to enact harsher penalties, such as industrial manslaughter, for employer negligence. From the enforcement aspect, work regulation authorities investigate workplace accidents and prosecute offenders. Penalties range from fines to prison sentences. In Victoria, the penalty for breaches of the Occupational Health and Safety Act has been increased to $250,000 or a five-year jail term. The yardstick for industry continues to rise. This means that everyone involved needs to pay attention to implementing health and safety policies and procedures and making sure that training adequately covers important aspects. We don't think of one second as making a great deal of difference to our lives. Seconds, minutes, even hours tick by so quickly that often we don't even notice time slipping away. But there is a place where one second is very important. In industry, one second means a lot. One second is all the time it takes for a worker to be dragged into an unprotected machine and to kill. Life. death. But it doesn't have to happen this way. What would happen if we could turn back time? Let's see. Death. Life. When it's put like that it seems simple, doesn't it? Play it safe and you'll stay safe. Or take risks and expose yourself to a range of unforeseen possibilities. So, if everyone knows what the safe procedure is, why do industrial accidents continue to happen despite legislation, rules, regulations and training? Because people let other concerns complicate the task at hand. They close their eyes to the consequences of their actions, falling into the, if I only do it once, it'll be okay mentality. Or, because they're stressed or rushed, they take shortcuts and increase the risk of injury to themselves and others. Risky or hastily made decisions are always an unpredictable option in the workplace. Probability dictates that an accident will happen sooner or later. Afterwards, you'll have to deal with the results of your actions. If you're injured, you face a lifetime of pain. If you are killed, think about how your family and friends will deal with your death. If you're the cause of an injury to another worker, you'll have years of guilt and regret to live with. When you have to make a choice, choose the safe one because you can't ever turn back the clock and have a second chance. Employers have a duty of care towards their employees under occupational health and safety law. Part of this duty is to implement risk control measures. It's often the case that a risk can't be totally eliminated. In such cases, the risk has to be managed. 
Dealing with dangerous machinery or equipment doesn't have to mean that the work itself becomes dangerous. Lockout and tag out is a practical initiative used in many workplaces because it works. As simple as it may seem, lockout and tag out plays a vital part in making your workplace safe. Therefore, it is important that you become familiar with the procedure and realise that it's been created for a very good reason to save lives and limbs. Take the time to learn the correct procedure the first time around. Being unsure of what to do increases the chance of doing the wrong thing, which in turn increases the chance of an accident occurring. Lockout and tag out is often used when dealing with shop floor machinery such as lathes or presses. Many people aren't aware of the other instances where it can be applied. Almost any type of equipment can be isolated using lockout and tag out. Forklifts, air tools, scissor lifts and hand tools can all be locked out, as well as pumping stations, access to heights and lighting. This video will show you many situations where lockout and tag out can be used to enhance safety. Now of course it's impossible to show every scenario. Now fortunately the principles of lockout and tag out remain very similar even if the machinery in question is different. So concentrate on learning the general procedures. This will prepare you well for when you need to deal with other kinds of machinery. Lockout and tag out is used because it's easy and because it's very effective in protecting workers. Lockout and tag out is a method of isolation. Isolation refers to the prevention of activation or energising of machinery. If done properly, lockout and tag out ensures that power sources temporarily remain off so that work can be undertaken without a machine suddenly starting up. Machines don't have the ability to stop and think about whether they should be starting up or not. Unfortunately, they can't recognise the difference between a chunk of wood, metal or a person. So it's up to you to make sure that you keep yourself and your workmates safe. Lockout and tag out is generally used when maintenance or repair needs to be performed on a machine. It's often the case that a worker may have to go inside a machine to fix a problem. It's easy to see that this situation could become extremely dangerous if the machine started functioning. If you are required to place your whole or any part of your body in such a position that an unexpected movement, a release of stored energy, an energising of electrical systems or the flow of gases or fluids could result in you being injured, there must be a system whereby the machine can be isolated from the power source or the stored energy can be released. A worker dealing with machines where there is a risk of injury means that there is a need for isolation. Lockout and tagout enables equipment to be repaired and maintained safely. Lockout and tagout is a simple procedure. It basically stays the same even if the machinery in question is different, with only minor differences. If machinery is used within your workplace and a system of isolation doesn't exist, you should look into introducing a safety procedure before an accident occurs. If lockout and tag out is used at your work, it's wise to reassess the system regularly to make sure that it's working in the safest way possible. Firstly, a risk assessment should be undertaken. Identification is the first and probably the most important part of the process. Take time to look at everything that might be relevant to a lockout and tag out procedure. Being thorough in the beginning is a good way to prevent possible disasters in the future. You will need to identify the following. What will be involved? 1. Machinery and equipment. Look at all the parts of the system that will need to be shut down during repair or maintenance. Take account of all the equipment and switches. Machines that require isolation of multiple energy sources may require specific isolation charts to be displayed in order to reinforce training on the correct isolation procedures. 
2. Power sources. Machines are powered using different sources. The obvious one is electricity. Others use mechanical, hydraulic, pneumatic, chemical, gravity and thermal energy. Make sure that all the energy sources are known to prevent unforeseen events. 3. Neutralization. The power running the machine needs to be neutralized at its source. Neutralization means that the machine is reduced to a zero energy condition. Different power sources need to be neutralized differently. Here are some common examples. Neutralizing electrical devices means disconnecting switches. Neutralizing machines using spring energy means releasing or blocking stored energy. Neutralizing hydraulic or pneumatic energy systems means draining or bleeding lines. Parts that could fall or disengage if the machine is neutralized should be securely blocked. Suspended parts should be placed in a safe resting position. 4. Restarting procedure. Examine how the restarting procedure will operate. Who will be involved? Identify all the personnel who will be involved in the procedure or who are likely to be affected by it. Only persons authorised by the employer are permitted to lock out and tag out. Authorised persons may include staff and contractors. The types of persons you should consider are persons who will lock out and tag out, persons who will be responsible for repair or maintenance, persons who will be in the vicinity of the machine and persons who will be responsible for supervision. Before implementing the right isolation procedures, you will need to undertake a risk assessment. Make sure it includes every aspect of the task. The following is a guide for correct and safe lockout and tagout procedure. Each part of the process is equally important. Lockout and tagout only works if the entire process is carried out properly, not just certain parts. Overlooking even one step can have serious consequences. 1. Communicate. Don't forget that it's people who are the most important part of the lockout and tagout procedure. Ensure that all the staff who will be involved in the procedure are aware that it is taking place. Let them know the reason why the machinery needs to be shut down. 2. Shut down. The machinery or equipment should be shut down using normal operating procedures. This usually means a stop mechanism such as a switch or button. 3. Lockout. Lockout is the best mechanism for guaranteeing safety. It provides a physical barrier to anyone who might want to use the machine. You will need to locate the power source of the machine or equipment. All power sources must be locked out. Now you can see how important it is to make sure that every power source is identified. Overlooking just one means running the risk of the machine starting up even if you have followed the correct procedure for the other power sources. If the machine is locked out properly, it means it won't become active. The lock that is used should be specifically designed